Good evening, Cape Band and the North Shore. Welcome to the Good News Program. My name is Bill Robinson, and I'm your host for this evening's program. And we have two very, very special guests all the way from Lawrence. They drove through the traffic to get here so that they could tell their story, how Jesus has affected their life, to you people out there. Danny, Danny Nunez and Pastor Victor Jarvis, you, thank you so Good much bless. for coming. Thank you um, for inviting us. Wow, this is, this is dynamite. You know what, I, wanted, I want to explain to these people that you, you guys just didn't fall out of the planet Zatar or something, you know? That how God has got uh, ways to hook up people's lives and, and, and uh, there's always the divine appointment when we don't expect it. So I want to tell you, I met Danny first, um, I think it was in August. We were at a conference um, in Waltham and a mutual friend of ours was speaking there, Pastor Stephen, who's been on this program a couple of times, and, and Danny was translating from English with a Uganda accent <laughs> into <laughs> Spanish. And I'll tell you what, I have never, Danny, seen anybody translate like that. It was like you were doing the preaching. Praise it was God. unbelievable. You know, I said, whoa. And everyone was like, whoa, this is unbelievable. You know, this is Holy Ghost time, you know. So Danny was doing that, and... Um, Afterwards, I spoke to him and I said, man, you did a great job. He was like, yeah, I guess, you know. Um, and I said, you know, uh, it gave me a flyer about a prison ministry. And when I saw that, it hit, it, it rang a bell, you know. So I said, Danny, you got to tell me about it, you know. So he introduced me to his family and we got talking. I said, you got to come down here. He said, if I got to come down, he said, I want to take my pastor with me because he's got a story too. I said, Tremendous. See, you know, these things don't just happen, you know, uh, by accident. So I'm going to tell them what a testimony is and what the good news is. The good news is, is if we trust God to save us through what Jesus Christ has done for us, then here's the deal. Your sins are forgiven. You start to look at life with a clear perspective from his point of view. And then when it's over on planet Earth, you go to heaven forever. Come on, there's nobody out there on the street selling a better deal than that. <laughs> Nobody's got that deal. So, you know, sometimes the, the story, you know, develops with some tragedies, but God always takes and turns them around and makes them triumphs. From trials, he turns them into his story. And, and disasters, he turns it into decisions for Jesus. And, and a mess always becomes a message. You know, don't do what I did, die. <laughs> you know? And crisis brings us to Christ. So that that's basically what you know, what we're doing, doing here. That's a testimony. Um, and we're going to start with Danny. And if there isn't time, Pastor has agreed to stay a little bit longer and we'll do part two of this because I, I think it'll be a part two story. So, Danny, you're in the prison ministry. Uh, we'll, we'll back it way up. Born in where? New York. Born in New York City. New York. See, he's got a New York City accent. I could tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't have the attitude. <laughs> Not anymore. He's got a great Not attitude. Anymore, <laughs> um, so you grew up in Lawrence. Grew up in Lawrence, yes. I um, uh, was, you know, a uh, regular kid as, as far as, you know, growing up um, in the, the neighborhood of Lawrence with my, my mom, single mom. Yeah. You know? um, There's six of us in the family. You know, just doing my business, you know, with the, with the friends of mine, just growing up, yeah. you know, having fun when we were young, you know, yeah. just hanging out, doing our thing, you know. Yeah, like every kid today. Like every kid today, yeah. yes. But eventually, you know, as time went by, start getting into a little bit of trouble, you know. You told <laughs> well, me you were not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, but I wasn't always in the church, right? <laughs> you didn't so, live there, babe. <laughs> that's right. So... As I was growing up and learning things on the streets yeah. and not learning it as well at home because of the lack of the presence of a dad at home, yeah. that became uh, a negative influence, yeah. negative, had a negative effect on my life. Yeah. And the things I would be curious about, I would learn on the streets with my friends and we were all growing up and just, you know, experimenting and learning right. as, you know, kids do. Kids yeah. do. Yeah. Exactly. Now, you were a good student. Uh, <laughs> you say so. <laughs> I don't know if my teachers would agree. <laughs> um, 
when I wanted to do my classwork, I did my homework. I was, it's not that I'm dumb. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a bright yeah. person. Just I was lazy. Okay. It was the laziest the word and, and rebellious. Okay. Rebellious, you know. Okay. Now, one does not know how you become rebellious, but you know, I guess it's something that you learn maybe through the years, you know. Pick up it's, a spirit of rebellion. Pick up, yeah, you pick up a spirit of rebellion. I know that yeah. in, in our nature, you know, yeah. that when, when we don't know Jesus, yeah. when we, we're not free, when we're, yeah. we're, we're slave to the, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that those spirits come and, you know, right. they just take over and, you know, you have, you feel like there's yeah. nothing you can do about it and you just go with it and you just try to basically walk through a path. Yeah. Getting, you know, stumbling and, yeah. and falling and getting hurt and cut and bruised along the way. And you and, figure that's life. That's and you figure that's that's how life it is. Yeah. You know, this is the the, yeah. the card I was dealt. You know, this is my life, and I just got to do the best I could do with it. So you were at the at the Vulcan Lawrence. So I'm at the Vulcan Lawrence now, and um, I only year. I only was there for a year. You know, they got me there for a good year. <laughs> I didn't finish my second year. Yeah. Um, you know, at this point I'm hanging around with the wrong crowds. Yeah. Gangs and you know. Yeah alcohol, drinking at a young age, you know, yep. I was introduced to alcohol at a, at a young age, you know, yeah. uh, drugs, you know, marijuana, cigarettes, yeah. you yeah. know, all at a young age. Um, so you took a geographical course, <laughs> cure to Florida. So yeah, um, what happened was a group of gentlemen visited my house, not in a very good way, Yeah. looking for me. Yeah. You know, my mom had, she knew the type of things I was in the yeah. streets, she didn't yeah. know how deep yeah. I was in. But she said, if anything else, if you keep getting in trouble, you're going to have a one-way ticket to Florida. Yeah. Send you with your, your uncle to Florida. Yeah. That sounded like, you know, it sounded like vacation to me, you know. Yeah, so you're in Florida now. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Florida now, and I'm, I'm trying to start again. Yeah. You know, trying to start yeah. a new, uh, new, new, page, on a the new sheet. page on the sheet, exactly. Get in trouble again in school. Right. You know, it's not the teachers. You know, I kept blaming the teachers. The teachers, I'm in another... <laughs> You know, kids do that. They figure the parents the are stupid and the teachers are stupid. Then all of a sudden, when they grow up, they say, "Wow, they were that stupid." <laughs> and the thing is, um, you really put this mind. You have this mindset of, you know, every, the world is against me. Right. You know, the world, everything, everybody's against me. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the nice guy. You know. <laughs> yeah. But it's not really that way. You so know? you're now you you uh, have another tour of duty in the Queens. So after I blow it in Florida, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I drop out of school. Yeah. Um, I have to work, but I'm too young to work yeah. at the age that I'm 15. I can't get a job. So my sister um, accepts me in her house, and her and her husband have a company that they say that I could work for them. Yeah. You know, So I help them out in the company. I work with them. And meanwhile, I'm doing this. I'm still drinking. I'm still yeah. partying, you know, yeah. and I'm yeah. just going along with my life. Yeah. Year... A year and a half or so, while I, after I'm living in New York, I go out one day with my uncle. And it's a nice summer day, you know, yeah. like every other day, regular yeah, yeah. day. And we head out to go get something to eat. Yeah, one of the... And these, these corner, yeah. I don't know if you've seen yeah, them, they're, they're like a... Yeah. Kind of like a little like uh, a lunch truck. truck, a yeah. lunch truck yeah, lunch in the corner. Truck. Yeah. He gets whatever it is that he wanted to get. And I stay behind. I was getting something to yeah. drink or something to eat. I'm not too sure. Meanwhile, he's on his bike. I'm on mine. He's heading back towards home. Summer day, he's looking around. He's waiting for me. All of a sudden, I hear some screeching tires about a block up the street. Mm -hmm. I know I'm sitting on my bike, and I hear a voice that came out of inside of me. It felt like it came out of inside of me. Mm -hmm. I could hear it inside of me say, don't move from where you are mm -hmm. and look at that car that's coming. So I decided to listen to the voice and I said, well, you know, maybe the car is going to do a show or smoke show or something. Yeah. The car is coming barreling down the street. We're at the corner of a stop. Uh, we're at the corner of a, of a sidewalk mm -hmm. where the lunch truck is stopped. The car all of a sudden decides to jump the sidewalk flies right behind me, I'm frozen, into the path of where my uncle was. Right. So, at that moment, I lose my audio yeah. and my voice. Yeah. It felt like slow motion. Yeah. I couldn't even scream to him. I couldn't even 
warn him. Yeah. He gets hit by the car. He goes flying. Yeah. He hit, lands on the car. Wow. The car's on the sidewalk. The car turns back on the street. The body flies, his, his body literally flies wow. towards the street that way. And you're okay? I'm okay. Wow. If I would have not listened to the voice, right. who knows? First experience. We're talking about experiences, folks. God moves through experiences. You say, well, you know what? Hey, listen, I have two gentlemen right in front of me that you're going to hear experiences. Okay. And I'm going, I want to fast forward this a little bit. Now you're back to Lawrence. You're working. You're making some money. You're doing a party scene all over again. Um, you got those pictures, Danny. Get them ready. Yes. Because I want these people to see what, what, what it looks like. Um, tell me if I got this straight. You're at your brother's house. You're drinking. You're practically you're going to like a blackout. You go to the clubs. I want you to watch these pictures. If you're telling me that God isn't involved here in this man's life and he, he has an absolute supernatural protection upon him, you've heard the first story, you've heard all the times, when he was a kid growing up, he came close, like a lot of us, but nothing happened. You're at the club, you don't remember. The next thing, you're in a car with these guys. And show them the picture, Danny. Can you get that picture on? All right. Okay. You were cut out of that car with the jaws of life, unconscious. At the age of 18. At the age of 18. At the age of 18, I was, like you said, I was partying. We were in the nightclub. The last thing I remember was that I was taking a drink and I was going towards the dance floor. From then on, I only remember waking up in the hospital. Everything that I'm going to tell you from then on is accounts that I've heard. Yeah. So we left the scene, we left the club scene. We were... This was a car, a friend, a friend of my brother's car, oh, a brand yeah. new car. His, actually, his girlfriend's car. <laughs> yeah, right. I remember this Brand story. new. Yeah. Yeah. So we leave the scene. Everyone else is, you know, in yeah. a similar state or worse. Yeah. You know, intoxicated and also high on drugs, you know, yeah. high on cocaine. Yeah. So the, the driver of the car had crashed in the parking lot when we were leaving. And I tell him, you know, you should let me drive. I had just gotten my license a few months earlier. Oh, yeah. You should let me drive. You're, You're too drunk expert. to drive. Yeah, right. you know? <laughs> You're too drunk. I'm an expert. You're too drunk to drive. He figures that it's a good idea. Everyone else does. <laughs> we leave the place. Along the way, we get into, we, we, we crash on a sidewalk. We get a flat tire. You know, we end up stopping at a, at a, 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 a yeah. corner store that, yeah. you know, many people hang out with afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. One of the guys that are in the back of the car says, I'm leaving because these guys, they're going to get into a, Dangerous accident. Right. Something's gonna happen. Yeah. So I'm I'm bailing. Yeah. I think that's the best thing he ever did. Yeah. Now I take the guy back to where his girlfriend's house was. They were, I guess, in an argument. Right. From what I was told. Yeah. I end up deciding on leaving. Just leave him there. Wow. Take it for a cruise. I end up. I say I end up sleeping, falling asleep behind yeah. the wheel. This is what I yeah. imagine will happen. What they tell me, the recounts that I, that I get. Yeah. Full, full blast into a telephone pole. Okay. Full speed into a telephone well, pole. Well, you saw the picture, folks. I don't know how anybody without some miraculous intervention could ever walk out of that. No airbags, no seatbelt. Right. You know, thank God no passenger. Right. Thank God I didn't kill someone that was right. walking on the street. Right. And you're waking up at the Lawrence Hospital. I'm waking up at the Lawrence General. My yep. mother's there, you know. I'm in the, you know, intensive care unit, you know, and I'm... Um, just busted up pretty good. Busted up pretty bad. You know, a couple yeah. of ribs were broken. My wrist was broken. Yeah. My hip came out of the socket. I got, my, my nose was broken in three parts. I had yeah. stitches yeah. all along my face. My clavicle was broken. You know, um, and, and, pretty bad. And you're working, you told me, like, in Bill Ricca and your present wife came just, you were friends at the time. Well, we were friends at the time, yes. And she came, came and visited me, you know, yeah. and she was there. She would come and visit me often, you know, and yeah. something started building up. Yeah. From then. Yeah, and you became a couple? We became a couple. Yes, we got together after I was, you know, after I recovered for yeah. a while. She was there. She was like my nurse. Yeah. You know, she would come and help me, you know. Right. And, you know, um, so you move in Push together. me along and we move in together. 
Um, we have a child together, yep. you know. She has a child from a previous marriage. Yep. Yep. Um, she comes to live with us and, and I'm raising, we're raising these two girls yep. at home. But you're still kind of like partying. I'm still rebellious. I remember at one point in time that when I was in the recovery stage, yeah. I was in my, my, my bathtub and I was, you know, just saying to the Lord, why am I still here? Yeah. Why did you leave me? Why am I still here? Why am I alive? And I was you don't looking even at my know face. him personally. I don't know him. I just know, I knew of him. Yeah. You know? But I, I was just saying to myself, you know, now I'm, I'm disfigured. You know, I'm not any better than how I was before. You know, I still continue. I still have this anger. I still have this hurt inside yeah. of me. Yeah. Emptiness. Yeah. Why am I alive? Yeah. Were my words. Well, you're going to find out why he's alive in a few minutes. Go ahead. Yes. So, you'd think I would learn from that process, but... I doubt it. <laughs> yes, hard-headed. <laughs> I would just drink more. Now, now yeah. the times that I was drinking now, yeah. I would black out more often. Okay. Every time I would drink now, I was blacking out. And you're an angry I was person? Angry drunk. Yeah. Making a mess in my house, slamming, you know. Um, verbally abusing. Verbally abusing my wife and my kids, you know. It was something horrible. She mm -hmm. was just living a nightmare, you know. Yeah. My family was in a, in a total nightmare. Yeah. Now, um, while I'm not drinking, you know, I'm a nice guy. You know, I have the, you know, and my house is falling apart, but I have this mask on, you know, and, and, and everyone else thinks everything is fine, right? I, I don't see that I'm wrong, you know. Also, I, I, for me, everything is, you know, the way it's supposed to be, you know. My, my dad, you know, was like this, you know. Yeah. And, and my mom and dad broke up at an early age. The, the men that I've known in my life, you know, for the most part, uh, this I've is seen, normal. This is normal, you know. We talked earlier, folks. You know what? This is a generational thing that can be passed down. If you start looking around out there, you're going to see it, and it needs to be broken. Yes. And there's only one way you're going to break that is with the blood of the, the Lamb. Of Christ, that's right. Yeah. Amen. It's the only way. And so what you're seeing is normal. You're a great guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, what's abnormal about drinking and and being mad all the time and, you know, you trying know, to run the show. Only when I, I was only, when I drank, I was a, a bad guy, you know. <laughs> and I was, yeah. Only, yeah. I was only like 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are together nine years. With a, together nine years. Um, you can imagine nine years of her with me yeah. in this situation. Yeah. And, um, you know, it doesn't get any better because obviously right. for me, I'm not the one with the problem. She's the one that maybe yeah. sees me differently, you, you know, and, and yeah. I'm always right, you know. Even though deep down inside there's something that tells you, you know. You know, right. Somebody's listening to this out there, Danny, and they're saying, yeah. They're saying, yeah, in the depths of their heart. So I want to speed it up. Your wife is at work. Your wife is, a, is into the Word. She's reading it as best she can. And see, God has, has people out there in the marketplace. He has a whole army of people, you know. And a woman says, starts to witness to your wife. I'm, tell me if I'm right. And then she said, we can come to your house and do a service. Yes, my my wife is was friends with a Christian yeah. woman at church at, at at work. Yeah, and this woman would always witness to her, you know, yeah. and speak to her about God, and yeah. you know, and they would sing songs, you know, because mm -hmm. my wife, at an early age, she was introduced to the Word. Yeah, and um, you know, God planted a seed in her. That's right. You know, God planted a seed in her, and we had a Bible at home. She would read, even though she wasn't a. a, a confessed Christian like she is today, like a born-again Christian, yeah. but she would read the Word. Yeah. She would think that she understood it, but oh, obviously, okay. you yeah. know, the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the Word to us, to yeah. us. you know. Yeah. Many times we yeah. think that we know what the Word means and we would, you know, misuse yeah. the yeah, phrases, right. you know. But nevertheless, her heart was in the right direction. But her heart was in the right God's direction. She would pray a lot yeah. and, and um, God yeah. hears. So the first pray. service, you watch TV. So they came and brought up service to the house and I was, you know, I, I could care less, you know, yeah. and I was just, you know, just How long TV. are they going to stay? <clears throat> and, yeah. How long are they going to stay? You know, come Second on. Second service. I got to get Second service. This. Second service. Now, I'm in another state now. I understand the situation I'm in. I know that there's nothing humanly possible that I can do. Right. I, I've done everything to destroy it. I can't do nothing that I can do to put it together. I know that there's you nothing that this. in my power that I can do to, right. put, to make sort this better. Sort of like at the end of the... Now I'm in a depressive state, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, I have these suicidal thoughts, yeah. you know, and, and I'm feeling like I'm worth nothing. Yeah. Worth bought a gun. I bought it. No, I was on my way to buy a gun. Well, I on your way got to a buy permit a for the gun. Had the permit. I don't have. I don't want anything to do with guns. But you know, the yeah. enemy works in these ways. Oh, you know? yeah. He puts these thoughts in your mind, these suicidal thoughts, and yeah. these 
thoughts that make you think that you're not any not important to anyone. Right. That no one cares for you. Nobody right. loves you. Yep. You know. But that's just from the enemy. You know. Those right. thoughts come directly from the enemy because God does love you. Right. You know. There's a God in heaven that loves you. You know. And cares for you. And knows the situation that you're going through. Right. You know. So and, tell and me about the night he visited you. The night he visited me. Two days after the service. Um, my wife sees me and she starts to minister to me with the words of love, you know. She sees me that, I, that I'm in a, a situation that I'm really depressed and I, and I look different and she says, what's wrong, something's wrong with him. She says, Danny, Danny, what's wrong with you? I wouldn't answer her. She says, Danny, you know, the, the thing is, it's not that we don't love you, you know, it's that you don't let yourself be loved, you know. We love you. Your family loves you. I love you. Your kids love you. God loves you, Ooh. you know. And, God and, loves and you. the floodgates just opened up, Bill. Wow. You know just, what? We get a website, Danny, and you know what? People can go on the website after this program's over and they can come up and say, listen to their husband. Listen, God loves you. Just like your wife was telling you, God loves you. Tell us about the night he visited because we got to speed it up. Okay, the Holy Spirit just came and just, you know, opened up the floodgates in my heart. And that one night, it was like the next night yeah. at home in my house, about 3.30 3 in the morning, you know. My wife is still talking and ministering to me. I'm, I'm crying. And from one moment to the next, she had recited Psalm 91. Okay. I remember. I told her to recite something from the Bible because there was a presence in the room. Remember, I talked to, talked yeah. to you about this. Yeah. And um, I could see it, but she couldn't. She could feel it. And I told her, do you know something from the Bible that you can recite? And she says, Psalm 91. She recites the psalm, very powerful psalm. She recites it, and this presence leaves the room. And all of a sudden, Bill, I tell you, the glory of God just came into that room and just overcame me. This, I, I call it this blanket of love that just came upon me. And I just felt the, 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 the love of God in my life. The burden that I had, Bill, on my shoulders that weighed over 100 pounds, I felt this weight just lift and just go. It would just leave. It left me. And I knew the forgiveness of my sins came to my life. I knew that God forgave me at that moment. And his presence was thick in the room and, and I could hear his voice and I could see him and he would speak to me and I would speak to him and I told these words to my wife he is here he is here everything's gonna be okay daddy's home that's how I felt like daddy came home he said everything's gonna be okay from then on I was a different man okay this is this is what we're talking about this is this is an experience that you know what People can go to church for 100 years and never know Jesus. That's right. 20 times a day if they want. But when you experience him in the depths of your heart and he changes your life, come on, man. No what way. an influence that is on the people around you. But, you know, you say, this is my story. This is my testimony, man. You know, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Amen. That's right. And no different, you know. And now, and now, pastor, he's in church. He's, he came to church. Made it official, got baptized in water, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> wow. The Lord and, had everything prepared. Oh, yeah. man. He, he had, every, you know he had the, the timing, everything. Because he had, my, my mom had, for my birthday, my, my, I was 27. Yeah. It was, this happened to me in December 2006. I turned 27 April 2006, April 13. My mom had given me, given me a Bible oh. for my birthday. She was attending Pastor Jarvis' church. And... and she was praying for me, you know. She was praying for me at church. They were praying for me at church. Yeah. And they were praying for me also in Brazil. Yeah. You know, they were praying for me, praying for me, Bill. Yeah. And those prayers were answered that day in December. Right. You know, and the next day I picked up the Bible with tears in my eyes, you know, and I called my mom. I picked up the Bible and I told her, it's, that's it. It's, you know, he it's, did it. It's over. It's over. He did it. And I began to, to attend the church and, um, I wasn't married with my wife at this point. I wasn't married with her. Yeah. I was just engaged with her. I wasn't planning on marrying her. Yeah. <laughs> God Two weeks later, I was married. <laughs> I was married to her. I, I said, we're getting married. <laughs> God still hadn't worked with her. You know, yeah. God was still working with her. Yeah. She still had these things in her yeah. heart yeah. against me. You know, the yeah. Lord had to work with her, and, okay. and God did well, the, the I'm going to put it on fast forward so you'll know. Not only did they get married, they were in Bible school. They'd taken the Bible college's courses. And he's in the prison ministry. And you just told me, Pastor, before the show started, that they are now the youth pastors yes. for the church. I'm saying, you know what? God takes 
takes the things of life that, you know, he wants to toss away, throw away. He said, no, 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 they were in Miami. Those are my people. I do transformation. I change them. You know, this is what the whole program is about. This is what Jesus Christ can do in your life. You heard the man's story. I mean, you see his walk. I mean, I see the love of God coming off him. And I always said to Danny, you're going to be a pastor. He tells me he's a youth pastor. <laughs> well, you know what? If he can do it for this man, he can do it for you. Amen. And that's what we come to this time and point in the program. I know I didn't say put the website up, but it's, going to, it's probably been up and it's going to come up. If you have any questions, ask us. But we want to give you the opportunity to do what Danny did, to ask Jesus into his life. You know, there's a lot of ways to do it and a lot of words you can wrap around it. But remember this, it's not fire insurance. It's not putting God up on the mantelpiece with all your other activities. It's not inviting him into your mess. You know, he'll come and then, like we live in a fishing community, then he'll clean up his fish. You know, he don't clean the fish first and then, then gets them. You no, know, he cleans them up, he catches them, then cleans them up. So, and if he's not lot of everything, he's not going to be lot of all. Okay? That's right. That's the ground rules. Understand yeah. what the cross means. Jesus took your place. Yes. He paid the penalty for your sin. Amen. He, and he washed you in his blood yes. for salvation and healing. That's yes. what the word says. Okay? Amen. So he said, and you say, well, yeah, I'm a sinner. I, I'm sorry, Lord. That's all he's waiting for. And then you say, I believe what you did for me. And I ask you to come into my life. Now, you can wrap your own words around it, but that's basically what you've got to do. And then ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost right. so that you can have the power to walk and say, look, I want, I want you to do for me what you did for Danny. Woo, come on. Listen, we're not talking about no trials and tribulations. There's plenty out there. But you know what? When we begin to understand who we are, that his son, he said, you are an overcomer, and that means you're over everything that comes. Danny, my man, thank you thank for coming. You, and Pastor, thank you, very much. thank you for being patient. <laughs> but you, you know what? Pastor said he'd stick around because he's got a story. All right? And he's going to tell it on part two of this series. So until next week, you'll be watching part two. We say, we're telling you have a great week and have a, have a wonderful time. And remember what you just did. You've asked a lot into your life.